this morning or this evening now. Uh, uh, me and Cherish, now Hernandez, have been married now for three weeks and a day. So as Brother Stain says, we're newly, newlyweds. Um, she's fantastic. Um, it's great to be able to do these things with her now. Now I have my right hand. She can be my right hand woman. Amen. Um, at this time, <laughs> at this time, uh, she's going to sing a song. And would you just worship with her before I preach the word? Can we just enter into a time of praise and worship before the word comes forth? Uh, I know that I have a word of God for each and every one of you. And uh, can you can we just enter into a time where we can just open up our hearts and our minds to the to the word of the Lord? Amen. I'm going to attempt to sing a song um, tonight that's very near and dear to my heart, and I believe it is with all of yours. It's, it's an old chorus, and it's uh, in the presence of Jehovah. And the song goes on to say, Troubles vanish and hearts are mended. And I can't tell you how many times when I was in the presence of God, just praying and seeking Him, that all my troubles didn't matter. They vanished. My heart was mended, and God completely heals he completely saves. He completely mends. He completely fixes. He com everything that he does, he does not do in part. Amen? Amen? Amen. Worship with me as I sing. church can we just lift up the name of the lord one more time lord it's such an honor to be in your presence today lord you are the king of kings and the lord of lords lord you are jehovah 
Lord, you are Jehovah Jireh, Lord. Lord, you provide for every one of our needs. Can we just, oh, can we just lift them up just a little bit longer? Lord, we thank you today, Jesus. Lord, you came into our lives, oh God, when we were nothing. Lord, you saved us, oh God, when we were going down the wrong road. Oh, we thank you today for your grace and for your mercy. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here tonight that can, to, can attest that if it wasn't for the grace and the mercy of the Lord, that you would be nothing, that you would be somewhere else tonight? You might be down the road at a bar. You might be uh, at some house just doing your own thing. But aren't you glad that God saved you one day? Aren't you, aren't you glad that he saved your family one day? I'm so glad that he saved me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, you can be seated. It is truly an honor to be in uh, this church at Peace Tabernacle with you guys. Um, uh, like Brother Bummy said, I met him. I don't. I, I was thinking the other day how long it was, but I don't remember within the last 10 years. And um, one word I was trying to come up with something special to say to Brother Bummy, and there was a lot of words. All were good. Just no, I'm just <laughs> wink, wink. No, but your pastor. Uh, came into my life at a time in my mid to late teens where I was going through a lot. And one, one thing, uh, y'all have definitely, uh, without a shadow of doubt, have seen this, but one word came to my mind when uh, I think of Brother Bummy, and that's faithful. Uh, for example, on Sundays at about 2 o'clock, me, him, and he, he mentioned a Blake Long, uh, and every once in a while other people would go, but we would always, you know, he would play, we would all play and sing at our church, uh, in the mornings, and then at 2 o'clock or so, we would go to someone else's church, Brother Hibbler's, to minister in song. And then right after that, we would have to race back to Apostolic Temple to go to choir practice. And I, I remember being just exhausted after Sunday night service. And, you know, every it, it was pretty often that we would go. I don't know if it was every week or monthly, but um, it just attested to your pastor how faithful he is. I know you've seen it. I'm, aren't you thankful for a faithful pastor in your life? <laughs> Brother Bummy, me and Cherish... Uh, love and appreciate you and Sister Bummy. We thank you for this opportunity uh, to be here with you guys. Um, I don't know any of you, but uh, thank you uh, for allowing us to be here tonight. It is truly an honor, like I've said. Um, can we just pray one more time before we get into the word of the Lord? Jesus, Lord, we're so thankful for your word. Oh, God, Lord, I pray that you would, Lord, minister to every heart and every life that's, Lord, under the sound of my voice, oh, God, that every word that I speak would be straight from your mouth and from your heart. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over everyone that's here tonight. I pray, Lord, if someone, oh, God, does not have the Holy Ghost, I pray that they would leave filled with your spirit today. Uh, I pray if someone is sick in their body that they would be healed. Uh, Lord, and if someone, oh, God, is weak in their spirit, Lord, I pray that you would encourage them today. Uh, oh, if you believe that God has heard you tonight, can we just give him a hand clap of prayer? Thank you, Jesus. Man, can you smell that bacon? I smell that bacon right now. That smells good. I can't wait. Brother Staines was saying that we're having breakfast for dinner after this. You'll be thankful that I'm not a very long-winded preacher. I don't remember how long Brother Bummy is. I don't know if he's a two-tape or a three-tape or our CD. Takes up a couple gigs of memory now. But I'm not a very long-winded preacher, and everybody say amen. No, I'm just playing. Don't say amen to that. Well, if you can tell, I really enjoy food, if you can tell by my stature. Um, amen. Can I get a witness to that? You know, I love all kinds of food. Uh, my favorite would have to be Mexican food, uh, if you can tell by my last name. But my, the close second would have to be Chinese food. I love Chinese food. Can anyone say amen to that? You can, ask, you can ask Sister Cherish, when we were dating in college, I would try to go to China King as much as possible. She, she hates Chinese food now. But I love Chinese food, and if someone brought up a plate of General Show chicken right now, I'd eat it right in front of everybody, just playing it. I respect the house of the Lord. But I'm just trying to get across how much I just love Chinese food. Um, and as many of you know that whenever you go to these Chinese restaurants, what is, what is one thing that they all have in common besides the good food? Because not all of them have good food. But one, one, one thing they have in common is that they have my Asian twin Buddha in every single one. Buddha, you see, uh, was born in the third or fourth century. Uh, he was born uh, to, into wealth. He uh, was born into several different uh, uh, palaces 
it was a man where his family came from a, a lot of wealth. And then whenever, you know, after his childhood, he, he became a man and, you know, he decided to go off into the mountains, so, so the Buddhist texts say. And, and he, he came to this thing called enlightenment where uh, he, he, he found world peace and that he, uh, he was re revealed to him how to, you know, end hunger and all these peaceful things and how to overcome uh, anger and to solve all the world's problems. And, you know, the list goes on and on. And, and to this day, he has millions and millions of followers. You know, they have the temples and, you know, the, you have the Buddhist monks. And, and this man, he, he was an influential man in his time. And, you know, it, it shows to tell that even to this day, he still has followers. We also, uh, another man named Muhammad, he, he was the central figure of Islam and who is known as its founder. He was considered by all to be the last prophet sent by God to mankind. <coughs> Excuse me. He single-handedly united the countries of Arabia to believe in his teachings. He was a convincing man that began a movement to eliminate all that didn't have the same way, uh, that didn't believe the same way that he did. His followers increased exponentially. This is true even today, you know, there's so, several different debates about uh, the Muslim people and all that, but it just shows, it, it just, it just shows you how influential this, this Muhammad was, that he, he believed that he was spoken to by God and, and that all these different uh, ways and these different uh, things that he had placed into his uh, doctrine were the truth. And so even now today there's extremists and there's all these people that believe in the teachings of Muhammad. You know, and then, and then we have modern day idols. You know, you have LeBron James, you have uh, Babe Ruth in baseball, you have uh, Bryce Harper, you have uh, Michael Jordan. And all these people, you know, people wear shirts that uh, have their names across them. People even get tattoos. People want to look like them, the new fashion. They, they want to they wanna emulate and follow after these people that they've probably never met or, you know, never came in, co in contact, to, contact with. However, just like Buddha and Muhammad and all these people, they both, they all have accomplished a lot according, you know, to, to, to modern day people and people idolize them and put them on pedestals. Maybe they even accomplished, you know, something to normal people. But if you would look and search this world over, you would eventually find Muhammad and Buddha's bones somewhere on this earth. Somewhere on this earth you will find a couple of tombstones with the name Muhammad and with the name Buddha. And, and, and if God uh, willing, in a thousand years, you will, you will see people's names such as you know, LeBron James. You'll find their bones on this, on this earth, amen? They may have been good people. They may have been good leaders. They may have been influential. But right now you could try and get a hold of those that have passed and you won't be able to get them on the phone. You, you can try and, and call them up on the phone. You can try to email them, but they won't, you won't get a reply. You won't get an answer. You can try and, and say, oh, Allah, oh, uh, oh, Buddha, can you answer me? But they won't listen because they are in the ground somewhere in this earth still after thousands of years. The thing about being an apostolic Pentecostal Christian is that I know I serve a God that he is not just an ordinary God. He is not a false God. He is not just a, an idol that we make, but he is the one true living God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I can still call my God whenever I am in trouble. Amen. I can still call him up uh, on the main line like we used to sing in Sunday school and say, Jesus, uh, I am in a rough spot right now. Uh, Lord, I need a healing. Uh, oh, God, uh, I don't know which way to go in my marriage. Uh, Lord, I don't know which way to go uh, in my schooling, oh, God, but I will trust after you. Uh, Lord, yes, aren't you glad you serve the one true living God today? He is alive and well, amen. He is here today. You know, the, the Catholics, they serve, they say they serve God, but then they, they worship all these idols and all these saints that are dead. You can find their bodies somewhere, but I praise the one true living God. Amen. You know, here in the next couple of days, excuse me, I don't know what it is. Whenever I preach, it's, there's just like a suction cup in my mouth somewhere that dries my mouth out. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Here, here in the next week, we are celebrating Easter. Anybody excited for Easter? Everybody bought their hats, their dresses, their shoes? No? I haven't either. Well, the, these... <laughs> <coughs>
in this, in this modern world, we, as a people, have kind of misconstrued and changed the true meaning of Easter. Now it's more about bunnies and eggs and candy. If you go to the Walmart right now, you, you'll find more candy and uh, pastel-colored goodies than, uh, than you would see maybe a cross or empty tomb, amen. You know, the thing about Easter is if there had been no Easter Sunday, then our whole religion and our whole doctrine would be invalid. There would be no point for us to be here tonight. We sh might as well just go to a Catholic church or go to a Buddhist temple because you see, we just, if we just believed in a God that came down to earth and, ro and rode himself in flesh and was born of a virgin, that would be really special. But it, wouldn't be ju it, it would just be like Muhammad or Buddha. If he went from doing miracles and teachings and ended up dying on a cross but never came out of the tomb, then he would have just been like any other false god. He would have just been like any other idol. He would have just been like Buddha and Muhammad. But what makes my God so special is that on that third day, after he had breathed his last breath and everyone thought he was in the ground for good, uh, the devil began to even, I, I imagine that the devil, you know, he began, began to start a celebration, you know. Oh, we defeated Jesus. You know, back then a few weeks ago when I was in the desert with him, he said, get thee behind me, Satan. And I was frightened, but now, you know, he's in the grave and he can't do nothing about it. So, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, the, the demons started getting happy. But uh, the devil, you know, began to get excited in all his imps. Uh, but we find in Matthew 28, verse 1, now after the Sabbath, as the first now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow, and the guards shook for fear of him, and he became and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay, and so quickly, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. You see, the difference between my God and these other false gods is that my God overcame something that none of these other men overcame. You know, he overcame death, hell, and the grave. He went through it all for you and me. He says in Revelations, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. He sacrificed and gave his all for you. He went through it all so that we would have hope, so that we would have life. He did all of this just so that we would know that we would have hope to overcome this world. Amen. My friend, you might be here tonight to, and you might think that you are dead. You think that you are in a place of life where you don't think you can overcome. I don't know if you're in a job where it's a bad situation. I don't know if you're in a relationship, young per person, where you know is not right and you think you are stuck. But I serve a God that is alive and he came out of the grave so that you can know that you are not stuck in a tomb, but you could come alive. Amen. You are not stuck in the tomb like Lazarus. You, you, you might think that it might be too late. Oh, man. Mary and Martha, they're crying outside of my tomb, but I serve a God that even though you might think he's late, he is always on time. Amen. Can you just give God a, a shout of praise? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Like the good old song says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I won't be too much longer. Like I said, I'm, I'm a short-winded preacher. But you see, going into another small direction, you know, we get all excited and get pumped up because he lives, amen. You know, we as apostolics, we always want to run the aisles and we want to shout whenever we, we see video or we see it acting in a play whenever the tomb rolls, uh, the stone rolls away from the tomb and we see the bright light and the earthquake at the at the plays. You know, we want to shout and run the aisles whenever God comes because he's alive, amen. That's great and that's awesome. That's the most exciting part of who we are as apostolics. We always look to the resurrection and the everlasting life, but we sometimes forget about what led up to that part. We forget that Jesus went through something else before he got to that part. We forgot that 
before we, before we can live, we, we must first die. We all want to live, but none of us just want to die, amen? I'm not talking right now about a physical death, because none of us want to leave this earth, but I'm talking about a spiritual death, a spiritual death to ourselves, where we submit ourselves to God. You see, dying is always hard. No one ever looked at death and say, hey, death, kill me. No one ever wants to look death in the faith and say, eh, you know, come on, you know, I'm ready for death. We even see Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane asking that the cup would pass because the burden that, th that you're carrying right now was on his shoulders. I'm sure as he went, you know, as after in the Garden of Gethsemane, as he got captured by the soldiers, he was saying, God, I know what I have to do. You know, I have to go. But Lord, let this, pa let this cup pass. I'm sure as he was going down, every, every stripe that was beaten on his back, every, every beating, every whip on his back, that he was saying, oh, this isn't hard, but I know what I have to do. As he was beaten, bloodied, and bruised, as he took every stripe on his back, as he walked and carried his cross down that long, hard road where he would ultimately give his life for you and I. I'm sure there was a part of him that said, oh God, I don't know if I can go through this. I don't know if I can do this, but he was determined. He wanted you and I to know that if he could go through death, hell, and the grave, that we could do anything. He wanted to be able for Paul to be able to pin the words, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And the words also that I am crucified with Christ, and yet I live. Not I, but Christ that lives within me. He wanted to do it so that he would know that you could die out to your flesh and submit it to him. He went through all of that so that you could know that it doesn't matter how tough your situation is. It doesn't matter what you're going through. You can overcome it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, you can all stand. I'm coming to a conclusion here in a little bit, but you know, you might be thinking right now that, oh, Jonathan, you just went, you just went <coughs> super depressing all of a sudden. What's the deal? But I want to tell you that you have hope. Amen. In Isaiah 6 and 1, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. You might be thinking, what's so significant about that? What does what a locomotive have to do in a temple? First off, the train of his robe. It's not a train, it's, it's the long train, as my wife had on her wedding day. Beautiful. But the special thing about this, this, this scripture, and, you know, I heard it, I don't remember where I heard it in death, but you see in those times, the train of, of the king's robe uh, depicted just how many battles he had won. The longer, the longer the train of the robe, the more battles that that king had won. And right here it says, Isaiah saw that the train of God's robe filled the entire temple and this and the temple wasn't just this size but it was a huge gigantic temple and it filled all of the temple that lets me know that my God he's he looked into the future and said you know sir whatever battle you're going through I've already won it doesn't matter what you're going through today I serve a God that won every single battle amen they say not to give personal testimonies but as a child or before while I was in my mother's womb my mother was having complications and she was supposed to lose me. My, my grandparents had to come and live with my, my parents and my brothers because my mom was bedridden. But as you see, I'm still here, amen? You know, as I got older and as I continued to grow older, you know, I was, I was raised in church, thankfully. But when I was one and two, my parents were still in Catholicism. And the reason why I'm here today is nothing but nothing short of a miracle. You see, um, my mom got the Holy Ghost and was baptized into a Spanish church. And my father, you know, was a typical Hispanic man and didn't want anyone to ever lay a hand on him. He, he, he was raised that men that cry are wussies. I didn't learn that because if, <laughs> if Brother Bummy could attest at my wedding, I cried like a little baby. <laughs> but... You see, my, my dad said he went and visited while my mother got baptized. And uh, he said, I'm not going back to that crazy church. They're crazy. I'm not going back there. So one Sunday morning, my mom was like, I'm not going back to that Catholic church. My dad said, well, I'm not going to that crazy church. So they said, what are we going to do? We're not going to split the family over this. 
So they looked into the phone book and they opened it and they opened up to the churches and they said, whatever church is at the very front, that's the church we'll go to. So thank God that Apostolic Temple was there. And if, if you know, if you're good with letters, Apostolic A. So, you know, I grew up in Apostolic Temple and that was nothing short of a miracle. But, you know, that just shows that whenever God, whenever Jesus, you know, he went down that long road to Calvary, whenever he was crucified, he looked down to the future 2,000 however many years later, and he said, you know, I'm doing this so that Jonathan can overcome that sickness in his mother's womb. I'm going through this right now so that the Hernandez family and the Guterres family will be able to have hope and have a, a hope of eternity with me one day. And I don't know anybody in this place, but I'm sure y'all can attest. And if I don't know if anybody's here that hasn't been filled with the Holy Ghost. And, and you might be going through something right now. But let me tell you, I serve a God that he died over 2,000 years ago, but he rose from the dead to show you that he loves you. I don't know who you are or what you are in this place, uh, but my God loves you. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Can we just lift our hands right now? Lord, I feel, Lord, such a strong move of your presence in this place. Lord, I pray, oh God, over every single person, Lord, that is here. Lord, I pray, oh God, in Jesus' name, Lord, that, Lord, those that are going through something in their life, those, oh God, that are going through a trying time, oh God, I pray, Lord, that you would fill them with your spirit. To, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. If we could all just come to the front right now and fill these altars, if you would bring.